Welcome to the last in our series of Prophetic Perspectives dealing with the State of Israel and talking to voices regarding Israel. Today I'm delighted to have a dear friend and an expert on all things military, that being General Jerry Boykin. You all know that General Boykin served as the commander of the Delta Force within the U.S. Special Forces Command. He and I are planning to lead a pilgrimage group to Israel next June. We have entitled that trip, Battle for Israel. And General, we had no idea when we picked that name that battle would break out very dramatically in Israel just in recent weeks. Yeah, I don't uh, think for a moment that I didn't think about that just as soon as I heard about what was happening there. and. and you know, on the one hand, uh, I'm, I'm so uh, concerned about the Israelis. Yes. But at the second, you know, if you also look at it in a different perspective, this could be the big one. It really could, and we're going to get to that question. General, you have studied war and have been a warrior most of your life, all of your adult life, and, and very uh, recognized in that capacity. What is the historical context as a historian and military historian about the, or of the animosity, the historical context of the animosity expressed by Hamas and Hezbollah and so many other groups that seem to be dedicated to the destruction of Israel? Yeah, first of all, it goes all the way back to biblical times, and, and we can't understand it unless we understand the whole issue of uh, Esau and, and Jacob. And, uh, and how that created a, uh, a division that has never been healed. And, uh, and now we, we are living with uh, the reality of, of that, that divide between two brothers because one stole the other's blessing. And that really was the, the foundations. Now, there are other things that have happened that have made it worse, that have... Uh, and, and by the way, many of the people that worship in the Muslim faith that hate the Jews don't really know the biblical side of it. Yeah. So, so a lot of them hate the Jews, and they're not even sure why, except that they grew up being taught to hate Jews. You know, but in reality, uh, you you can't uh, overlook the biblical foundations of this hatred between. Uh, the uh, I wouldn't say between the Jews and and uh, Hamas or Hezbollah, because the reality is the Jews want peace. Now, today there is a hatred that goes both ways without question mm. because of the what they did right on the seventh of October. There's a terrible hatred between the two sides, but the Jews, for the most <clears> part fundamentally have just wanted to live in peace. And, uh, and, I, and I hope that that time comes. Well, obviously, even at their founding, uh, when they declared independence, their declaration of independence indicates in writing that they reach out with a hand of friendship to all the surrounding nations, the neighbors in that part of the world, looking for, for peace and for friendship. Of course, it was rejected then, and too often it's rejected today. Uh, you mentioned the, the animosity going back to biblical times. Sadly, even many in the traditionally Christian West don't understand that dynamic. Our own media seem to be absolutely oblivious to it. And it's not just Jew and Arab, because one of the great instigators of terrorism in the world today is Iran, and they are not Arab. They are Persian. So this is a, a whole empire. Uh, we know that Daniel was in that part of the world when he was writing his book. But there seems to be a great hatred, and of course you have experience with that malign nation as has been around, at least in modern uh, form, since about 1979. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. Uh, in fact, uh, going back to the, when our hostages were taken there uh, in Iran and held for 444 days. But here's something that everybody needs to reflect on. Those hostages were released after 444 days, and it coincided with the day that Ronald Reagan <coughs> was inaugurated. What does that tell you? Yeah. They were afraid of Ronald Reagan, and they let those hostages go just as soon as he raised his hand 
took an oath. Yeah, I think uh, strength uh, begets peace, and weakness oftentimes invites conflict. Uh, obviously, you've touched on the religious dynamic of this, the biblical and, uh, dare I say, prophetic uh, designs of even the hatred. The Lord declared that Ishmael would be a wild donkey of a man against his brothers, against everyone, and we've seen that come to pass. What do you recommend in this moment right now? Israel has obviously gone into Gaza. They're trying to root out the, uh, the terrorists that are there. But as I've indicated, there are leaders of Hamas living in great luxury in other nations of the world. So what is the military objective, and is it possible to really eradicate Hamas and this, this animosity that exists almost throughout the culture? The answer is I don't know. I don't know if, uh, if the Israelis are going to be able to root them out completely. But that is their objective. That's what they intend to do. Now, as <coughs> much I do know, the Bible tells us very clearly that uh, that the Jews are there's going to come a point, and the Jews are going to be called home from the north and the south and the east and the west. Some people don't think that 1948 was that time. I do. I believe that was the beginning of the final prophecy. Right. is when they started coming in from the north and the south and the east and the west. But the Bible goes on to tell us that Jerusalem will be their capital. Well, that part of the prophecy was fulfilled in 1967 when they uh, took the old city of Jerusalem. And I'm, I'm going to show this because yes. it's called In Our Hands. <clears throat> beautiful video. It's a beautiful video, and when you listen to this, and I'll get emotional talking about this, but when you hear that shofar blowing hmm. and you hear those Jews yelling, they're in, it's in our hands. They're talking about the wall, the Western Wall. Well, that was, this, that was another part of that prophecy that was fulfilled. And that prophecy still has things that have to happen. But I believe that this is the foundations of biblical Israel that we are told to expect in Ezekiel 38 and 39 and, and in uh, uh, all prophecy about that. Well, in terms of obviously the threat from that, that inner ring of nations, uh, you have Hezbollah up in Lebanon, you have many Palestinians fomenting violence uh, in the West Bank, in Jordan, you have the Muslim Brotherhood that originated in uh, Egypt, obviously in Gaza, Hamas has been entrenched. I, I skipped Syria, but the hate from Syria has been uh, very rabid in, in, for decades now. And yet, beyond even that inner ring of nations, there is Iran, there, there's Yemen, uh, there's Houthi rebels firing missiles from, from Yemen. Why in the world do they hate Israel? Again, you, we've addressed the biblical and the religious connotations, but do you see this particular war morphing and, and perhaps even growing into a much wider conflict? Do you see Iran coming in directly or Israel or the United States having to address Iran uh, as the, the instigator of much of this violence? Well, first of all, let me, let me say this so it's very clear what my position is. Um, I completely stand on uh, what I consider to be a, a very important uh, passage in the Bible, Genesis 12:3. Yes. I believe that, and I believe that we will pay a heavy price if we don't stand with Israel. And the reason that I am so concerned right now is because of uh, the administration that we have. I'm not sure that they understand it. I'm not sure they get it. Uh, and they, I'm not sure that they really are committed to Israel except for political purposes. So I'm concerned about that. But I believe there is certainly a chance that we could see uh, a war on many fronts over there. But this is what I was going to say earlier. The Bible also says that they're never going to be thrown out of this land again. Bible tells us yes. once they're reassembled, that will be their land. It doesn't say they're not going to fight for it. It doesn't say it's right. not going to be a big battle. 
it, uh, in fact, it says just the opposite. But I believe that uh, it's entirely possible that uh, we could have this war expanding into other fronts with some of these other terrorist nations that you talked about, some of these sovereign nations that you talked about, like Iran, uh, but also there, there are others. <coughs> And uh, I think that it's entirely feasible that they can have a, a battle with all of them. But go back and look at the Yom Kippur War and read the accounts of, of Israelis, Jews, not Messianic or fulfilled Jews, as we should be calling them, but, but, but Jews that are practicing Jews. And look at the apparitions that they saw. Yeah. When they were down to two or three tanks and the Syrians would turn and go back. And after the war, they asked them, why, why you, you had it won, why? No, you were reinforced by very heavy forces. <laughs> and, yes. And, and read it, I mean, it's story after story. That, God is not going to let them be thrown out of that land again. They amen. Will die. I mean, some of them will die. They're... They're, they're going to shed their blood, but they're going to come out victorious. It was Amos 9.15 where the Lord said, I will put them back in their land. Even some Christians are confused as to whose land it is. The Lord made it very clear. It is the land of the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I don't know of any Gentile Christian who would claim the land for themselves, even if they are replacement theologians. The Bible is very clear that is their land, and that we should support Israel. I wish we had a president right now with the clarity of vision of an Abraham Lincoln, who sometimes had to inspire his own military leaders to actually pursue victory. And of course, we know in World War II, the, thankfully, our leadership recognized that absolute victory was, was necessary, both against Germany and Japan. I think today, our leadership has been very fickle in its support for Israel and in its clarity of vision, and we could comment on that. You know, as I go back to Scripture, and I have many times over these last number of weeks since October 7th, the Psalms are, are very instructive. David's sense of crying out to the Lord even in times of great peril and danger. If you read Psalm 7, it's a beautiful picture of the heart that David would have had in an occasion like the attacks of October 7th. We can look at the other imprecatory Psalms, Psalm 35, where David calls out to the Lord to contend with those who contend with me, fight against them who fight against me, take hold of shield and large shield, and rise up for my help. We can talk about how the Israeli Defense Force soldiers right now I've seen them chanting, the Lord is our shield, the Lord is our defender. So even these guys who oftentimes don't have much religious background realize in this moment of crisis that they need the Lord. And I'm so grateful that he will be their shield and defender. Amen. And I was just talking to a guy that is an American, a good friend of mine who uh, is over there right now ministering to them. He keeps up. He has a ministry over there full time, but he's uh, right now ministering to the military. And I have ministered to the military. I have gone over there and and uh, ministered to the uh, the Christians within the military there. And uh, and I got to tell you, they have whether they admit it or not, and whether they have accepted Jesus Christ as their savior. They have an incredible understanding of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. They understand. It's a, it's a, it's something that uh, is hard for them to make that, make that decision to cross over. But they have a, a, a great deal of uh, understanding about what, what Jesus is about and what we as Christians are trying to tell them. Well, for our viewers today who are Christian, and, and many of you out there may wonder, how can I support Israel? I'm commanded to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We know that that really is a prayer for the coming of the Prince of Peace, even as we look for, for peace for the people living in Jerusalem and Israel, really throughout the region and the world today. But General, from your perspective, what would you encourage Christians to do beyond prayer, and that's critical, to actually be supportive of our 
our Jewish friends, and just the nation of Israel in this moment of crisis. There's nothing more important than prayer. And we need to, uh, as individuals, we need to join forces with other Christians that love Israel, love the Jews, and, uh, and, and, and really have a prayer network that keeps our coverage over them 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's the first thing. The second thing is, uh, dig deep into your coffers and provide humanitarian aid to them because right now is a time when they need it. Mm. And if you stop and think about it, uh, if you're not living out in the countryside there somewhere where you can grow your own uh, vegetables and, and olives and that type of thing, then you're dependent upon markets in the cities and markets in the cities because nobody's nobody's working in, in many cases. Uh, that they're just not, that the market is declining in terms of the amount of, of uh, uh, consumables that are available to these people. So, so get involved by giving them as much humanitarian aid as you possibly can. And then the, the other thing that I would say is uh, start helping to educate your neighbors. Mm. Yeah. I would never have believed that I would see the day when America would have so many people that have turned against Israel and turned against the Jews, and they have no idea what they're doing. They have no idea about the history. They have no idea about the, the battles that have been fought for that land. And, uh, and it's just it's heartbreaking to me. So educate your neighbors. Look, talk to them. Sit down and talk to them. And, and, and tell them the history. Well, what does that mean? That means you've got to know the history. Right. Educate yourself you as well. you got to get into it, too. And there's all kinds of books that uh, will tell you the history of it. And, uh, and then I guess the final thing is... Uh, all of these people that we consider to be replacement theologians, um, do all you can to persuade them that now is the time, whether they're Jews or whether they're whatever they may be, right now is the time when we ought to be standing <coughs> with people that are so beleaguered, that are so much on the front lines of, of what could be the, the final war yeah. in this world. And you want to be on the right side. You certainly do, General. I tell you what, here at Lamb and Lion Ministries, from the very day that uh, this horror befell Israel on October 7th, we have been very clear. We stand with Israel. We have given support, not only in prayer, but in, in resources, and will continue to do so. As I was uh, preparing to, to engage with you in this conversation, I reflected on two of the great military strategists uh, from ages gone by, that being Clausewitz and Sun Tzu. I'm sure you've studied both at different times. Sun Tzu had many, uh, he was a Chinese tactician even in, before Christ, many great uh, poignant statements of military insight, but one that, that jumped out at me was a statement he made, it is easy to love your friend, but sometimes the hardest lesson is to learn to love your enemy. Jesus Christ commanded us not just to pray for, for Jerusalem, but to love our enemies. So dare I say that right now, we have been lifting up tremendous prayers on behalf of the Jewish people, but I've also been praying for those who are filled with hate, that the Lord would open the eyes of their heart especially those who are ignorant. And there's a, many of them running around on some of our most uh, famous college campuses to open the eyes of their heart because right now they are enemies of the Word of God, they're enemies of the people of God, and yet the Lord in His grace and love sent Jesus Christ to die for them just as He did for you and me. So my prayer is for those people who are, are enemies of, of the Lord in that regard to have their eyes open, their hearts softened, and come to saving faith in Jesus Christ, whether they live in Gaza or whether they attend Harvard University. Absolutely agree with you. Well said. Well, General, I look forward to us getting together in person. Uh, I still pray next year in Jerusalem, Lord willing, we will go and, and give voice and, and actually put hands on 
uh, our intention to bless the Jewish people there in person. But today, thank you for coming and blessing us uh, on this edition of Prophetic Perspective. It's been a real privilege, and thank you for having me on the program. And uh, I'll see you in Jerusalem. <laughs> we certainly will. Well, that is it for this episode of Prophetic Perspective. I hope it's been an encouragement to you, even as it's been enlightening. And again, I hope that you too will pray, not just for the peace of Jerusalem, but for all those who are enemies of the cross, because without the grace of God, all of us would be lost. And Christ came for you, for me, and for those who still are in rebellion against Him. For Lamb and Lion Ministries, this is Tim Moore saying, Godspeed.